I always try to say that if you encounter some seemingly very difficult mathematical problem, one nice strategy is assume that you already solved this problem and try to find the property of the solution. And this is also one of those uh, cases. So for example, let's consider this beta lattice with g equal to 3. So it will infinitely repeat it. So suppose there is a percolating cluster. Of course, if there is. And this population, this percolating cluster, by definition, should be a cluster which extends indefinitely or forever from here to there. Then Imagine that you are kind of random worker on this beta lattice and sitting on the percolating cluster. Then by the definition of the percolating cluster, you can always have to, you can always, you are always able to walk from this site to this site by only stepping on the percolating cluster without leaving the percolating cluster. So you can, for example, so you are following this bond between two sides. So you can imagine a walk on the percolating infinite cluster. But the purpose of this walk is to examine the population, populate the, the situation of the population. You have to be able to walk all the way from left to right. In fact, the, the concept of left and right is not quite well defined here, but just imagine. Then we have to be able to walk from this side to their side, the, the other side. So you can just add one more restriction here. If you can, if you are able to walk from here and go back, then there is no point of population. So this is a kind of a, some special walk where just a one non-trivial restriction where the retracing or retracting of steps is forbidden. So you can, you cannot go, you cannot return to the already busy site. Then you can either, so in this case, you can either go from here to here or here to here. These are all under the assumption that you are working on the populating cluster by assuming that there is a populating cluster. Then, the possibility of continuously working from here to the others, from here to one of the unoccupied sites, you have two different possibilities. And the reason why you have two different possibilities, uh, even if you have uh, three neighbors, one of them must be the road you already took. So you only, you only has a Z minus one. So I drew this Z equal to three cases. This apply for the general. So if this was a uh, z equal to 100, 
this will be 99. So you have C minus one possible pass or bond to walk from here to there. Then two, so the argument is that in order to continue walking on the populating cluster, there must be at least one accessible branch to walk along. So among these two, again, this is all prob probabilistically speaking, but among these two, at least you should have one occupied site for you to continue this walking on this populating cluster. So among these Z minus one possible paths, for you to have a expectation number of one pathway, you should have this criterion. So you always have to remember that what is probability of this site being occupied? It's all independently determined. So always P. And this one is the probability for this site to be occupied also, also P. So the expected number of occupied has should be probability times the trial. So P P times C minus one. And the threshold or the criterion for this walk to be continued is of course this should be greater than or equal to 1. So by this logic, any probability that will be this one, greater than or equal to z minus uh, 1 over z minus 1 should guarantee for the continuation of work. So this is a very simple argument, but actually exact argument for the, the better lattice. So from this logic, the critical probability is, of course, c minus 1 over c minus 1. Then now you can kind of retract from here to one dimensional case. As I already mentioned, one dimensional population is a special kind of beta lattice with z value equal to what? Anyone? One? Actually, two, left and right. So, We already learned that from for the beta lattice, the critical occupation probability is c minus the one over c minus one, and for the one dimensional lattice, c is equal to two, so of course p c is one. So it's proved. But of course, for the one-dimensional population, I mean, without this kind of argument, we already know that this fact. But well, another way to derive this is, of course, to proving the more general case and return to this 
case by observing that the one dimensional lattice is actually the better lattice with the C equal to the coordination number equal to two. So yeah, they all make sense to each other. So it means, so this is so important. So I will write down here again, the transition to population is happen at p equal to p c value, which is one over c minus one. So it's very simple. When z is equal to two or one dimensional lattice, p c is one. If z is equal to three, then p c is of course one half. When g is equal to four, p c is one third, and so on. So far, it's very simple, and maybe it's not quite easy to follow all this logic by just looking at this. So, I strongly recommend you to follow this by yourself by by studying this part very carefully and thinking about this problem a lot. This will need some kind of exercise. But this formula, you can, looking at this formula and try to see if this actually intuitive makes sense. This formula saying that it's easier to have a percolating cluster with larger number of C and Z is a coordination number and you can try to imagine that this is actually this actually makes sense so suppose you have this kind of lattice This is of course equal to three cases. And you can have like this will have like eight and and so on. Yeah, I cannot draw all of the other cases, but the reason why I put this easier because it will Populate even for a smaller value of p. It means that this c equal to three case require at least half of the site should be occupied for us to have a populating cluster. But in this case, we only need one seventh of the probability for us to have a populating cluster. And that's because it just have so many neighbor, but because of the property of the populating uh, population problem, you only need a single neighbor for you to have a continue have continue to work on the populating cluster. So only a tiny fraction of these nodes are required to be occupied. For us to have a populating cluster, for if the if the value of z is large, and this already implies some of the intuitive by, you know, intuitive reasoning when you dealing with, uh, for example, more general uh, network structure. Suppose you have some network structure with not with a uh, uh, not fixed number of uh, coordination number or degree. And you can imagine some very random structure, like a composed of the four or two or three neighbors at random. Then you may get the 
question that uh, maybe if the number of neighbor is not quite too much uh, fluctuating too much, then you can just assume the similar type of better like lattice calculation for those kind of network structures by just replacing the degree with the re replacing the coordination number with the average degree in the network structure. Of course, you have to assume that there is no loop here. That's also another strong, uh, it can be also another strong restriction, but as a first approximation, you can try that. And another thing you can imagine is that, imagine some kind of a uh, network structure without such a homogeneous or the uniform degree or coordination number distribution. So for example, you have like half of the side have this coordination number three and another half has like a eight or hundred. Then you can just intuitively think that you may assume that in that case, the populating population occur when for like a one over average value of z minus one. But actually, in that case, if you can study about this uh, later advanced material later, but when you have a mixed number of a uh, small number of coordination number and a large number of coordination number, actually. This large number of co coordination number actually dominate the system. So this will kind of determine the populating property. So in the case of the very non-trivial distribution of a coordination number in, uh, in general network structure, usually this kind of sites with large number of neighbor have some kind of decisive role for the population. And sometimes it's called so-called hub. So that's why the hub or those kind of a highly heterogeneous structure will be dominated by the smaller, it can be dominated by the smaller number of uh, sites with a very large neighbor. And that's a kind of advanced material. So, but by just looking at this and uh, thinking about this problem yourself, you can actually Imagine those kind of situations.